So we're going to look at the geometry of molecules as well as their polarity when there are lone pairs of electrons involved. So first let's look at NH3. The first thing we need to look at for NH3 is to determine how many groups are around the central atom because that's going to tell us what the geometry is. And when I look at NH3 I see one, two, three bonding groups and then one non-bonding group. So we have four groups around the central atom. So in that case we're going to have tetrahedral geometry. Remember it doesn't matter whether those are bonding or non-bonding groups and also whether they're single, double, or triple bonds. A double bond still counts as a single group. Now we're going to look at the bond. So I'm just going to look at N H. So just looking at the bonds there and what I want to see is is there a difference in electronegativity between the nitrogen and the hydrogen? And so these are different elements. There is a difference in electronegativity. And so I can say the bonds, so each of the three bonds are going to be polar. So I'm looking at those individual bonds. So just the N and the H. And then I have to look at the overall molecule. And this is where my tug of war analogy comes in. So imagine we have three teams that are evenly matched because they're all polar and then we have one team that walks away so you need to think about that geometry of that um, to what tetrahedral geometry looks like and remember that there's going to be a, kind of an imbalance because that lone pair there is like a team walked away and so there's no kind of counter to all of the other groups that are pulling and as a result what we get is a polar molecule. So four groups gives us tetrahedral. Difference in electronegativity between two atoms gives us a polar bond. Overall, we have to look at how the bonds cancel each other out or don't to tell let us know that we have a polar molecule. Okay. Now let's look at carbon tetrachloride. So again, we have four groups around our central atom. So that tells us we have tetrahedral geometry. And now we want to look at an individual bond. So I'm going to look at a carbon-chlorine bond. They're all the same, so it doesn't matter which one we look at. But I look at carbon and chlorine, and they have a different electronegativity values. And so I'm going to see that they're going to have polar bonds because there's a difference in electronegativity, so they're not sharing those electrons evenly. Now I need to look at the overall molecule. And what I see is that I have four evenly matched bonds here. So if we're thinking of our tug of war, our evenly matched teams. So they're all pulling symmetrically on that middle central atom, carbon atom. And they're all going to cancel out. So this molecule is in fact nonpolar. So when we talk about having lone pairs affecting the polarity of a molecule, we're talking specifically about on that central atom. So when we had NH3, there were lone pairs on the central atom. Most of the time when we see that, we're going to see that the molecule is in fact polar. The lone pairs on the chlorine atoms do not affect the behavior of the carbon. And we're only worried about what's attached to the carbon. We're not looking at the geometry around the chlorine atom. Atoms, we're looking at the geometry around the carbon atoms. So we're only worried if there are lone pairs there. So the presence of lone pairs doesn't necessarily make a molecule polar if they are on those terminal or outer atoms. We have to worry about what's attached to that central atom.